Thank you, Toastmaster. Most welcome guests, fellow Toastmasters. My name is Jamie Lee, and as you've heard, I am a negotiation trainer. You might be wondering right now, maybe she has some quick tips for me that I can use. <laughs> yeah, I see some head nodding. <laughs> I don't give quick tips because they may not apply to your situation. I will, however, share my three core principles around negotiation and share with you how I've negotiated in my life. Before I do that, I'd like to ask, how do you define negotiation? Steve, how do you define negotiation? Winning, whatever you want. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? How do you define negotiation? Yes. Consensus. Consensus, thank you, very good. One more. In the back. Yes. Like playing tennis. Like, like a game, great. Some people think negotiation is like a game. Some people think negotiation is a dreaded chore. I define negotiation as a conversation between parties with the intent of reaching agreement, where all the parties have the right to say no. I love this definition because it has the word no in it. <laughs> and you might think, wait, isn't negotiation all about getting to yes? Yes, it is, but this is the perfect segue into my first core principle on negotiation, which is to invite and embrace no. What does that mean? It means be okay to walk away from the deal if it isn't right. It means always have your BATNA ready. BATNA. Does anyone have an idea what that stands for? Yes. Best alternative to a negotiation agreement. Perfect. <laughs> Very good. You know that was a mutual win, interest-based negotiation. You can be up here and give us a talk on a, about it three months from now. Um, so that's my number one core principle. Always invite and embrace no. It's already baked into the meaning of the word. Second principle, second and third, is that the valid end goal of a fruitful negotiation is not winning. It's not about you getting the bigger piece of the pie. That's a different kind of negotiation altogether. The kind of negotiation that I teach is about reaching consensus, it's about understanding the underlying interests of the other side, and the valid end goals of such a negotiation is, in my definition, fulfillment and connection. So three core principles. Invite and embrace no. I'd like to tell you about the time that I've embraced no heartily. When I was a senior in high school, I was a very boring, loner, nerd. I was a very different person than the person you see right now. I was about 30 pounds overweight. Uh, I didn't have a lot of friends. Uh, my favorite activity Saturday night was staying at home watching ER reruns with my mom and she would turn to me and say, Jamie, why don't you go out with boys? <laughs> That was the type of person I was. Senior year, prom date is approaching. I wanted to go to prom with a boy, like everyone else. Or at least I thought that's what I wanted. So I reached out to the five most harmless and clean looking boys in my grade. <laughs> and they all said no. <laughs> they all gently turned me down. I guess I was kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> but I still went to prom. I went to prom by myself. I borrowed my sister's dress. I wore her platform shoes. I showed up. I believed in myself. I asked. I was turned down, but I still went and had a fantastic time. It was great. I didn't have to worry about this day, you know, is he bored? Is he not having fun? No, I had fun with my friends. I danced the night away. And the lesson that I learned from this experience is that 
I need not be afraid to ask for the things that I want. And to quote the R&B singer Alia, if at first you don't succeed, dust yourself up and try again. <laughs> and if you don't get the thing that you want, you can still thrive. And this is because I'm going to circle back to the definition of mutual win negotiation. It's about understanding your deeper underlying interest. And at heart, my position was I wanted to go to prom with a boy, but at heart, I just wanted to have fun like everyone else, and that I did. So invite and embrace no. Number two, the valid end goal of a fruitful negotiation is Fulfillment, it's not about winning. Winning can be the outcome of a successful negotiation, for sure. But the valid end goal is fulfillment. What does fulfillment mean to you? Fulfillment for me means something different. It's a personal thing. So fast forward eight years, I was working at a hedge fund. June. July 2008, I joined an Asian, fo Asia focused boutique hedge fund. Two months before the Lehman collapse, my timing was impeccable. <laughs> and I thought, this is it. I am going to make tons of money. I'm now you know, joining the ranks of, do I have the red card? Oh, okay. um, I'm going to have fast forward again and let you know that I quit the hedge fund uh, after two years, joined a uh, VC firm, and I worked pro bono because that better aligned with my, uh, my values. And that was a much more fulfilling and um, great outcome for me because then I was able to pivot my career to work with technology entrepreneurs and then to do this negotiation training on my own. So, Three core principles, invite and embrace no, and the valid end goal is fulfillment and connection. Thank you.